Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys, wherever you are in this beautiful world. Whenever you're watching this YouTube video, welcome to the Bitcoin Family YouTube channel for the newcomers. My name is Didi. I believe in Bitcoin. But today, it's all about a very special guest. I must say a very special guest because I saw his charts the first time in June this year. And I used one of his charts in my uh, video and then he tapped me on my shoulder and said, Didi, you're using my chart. Can you please also um, show the respect that you use my chart? And of course, I said, of course, man, bad, my mistake. And since then, I've been following his chart. Now, lately, I saw a tweet about the 200 day moving average and the two year moving average in Bitcoin. And that chart caught my attention. So I'm very proud and it's an honor for me to now introduce to you uh, Miss Config underscore exe my dutch english s also known as the year of the bull and which i prefer because it's a bullish year so i will refer to him now as the bull uh, the bull welcome to the bitcoin family youtube show and thank you for coming in Thank you, Didi. It's my pleasure. I've been a fan of yours for a long time. I remember reading a, uh, an article about you long before I even really started being active on Twitter and uh, to, to interact with you. And then uh, when you shared my chart back in June, that was very exciting. I'm very excited to be here with you today uh, and talk about my latest analysis. Yeah, I, I really like your charts. Man. I've been sharing your charts uh, afterwards more and more in the videos. Uh, also, of course, telling them, look, it's there, it's his chart, because um, I think you have a very sharp eye, just like your profile picture is telling you. I also love the anonymous part of you, of you that's like only talk, almost talking to plan B, but in a different way. Um, so um, I will ask you now, please share with us what you just tweeted, because I want my followers to understand exactly what you meant with that amazing chart over there. Sure. Give me just one second to get this shared out. All right. So uh, for any of your uh, viewers and followers, please uh, join me at twitter.com slash misconfig underscore exe. Uh, you can also find me on Instagram. I don't have uh, much up on there yet, but I'm getting started on there. Um, and yeah, I just recently posted a, an analysis uh, focused primarily on the 200-day moving average as well as the two-year moving average and its 5x multiple. Uh, so I have, uh, if you click on this thread, I also have a thread reader link, uh, and that will be a little bit easier for you to read. Uh, but please go ahead and view and retweet uh, this primary thread here. Um, so just as a reminder, before we get too far into it, um, I'm not your financial advisor. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just a dude who fas is fascinated by patterns. Um, I learn, I have fun, and I hope that you're doing the same and uh, be smart about it. You know, I'm not trying to tell you what to do with your money or anything like that. So that out of the way here, um, this is what I am looking at with the long-term chart of Bitcoin. And this is on a logarithmic scale, meaning that the price is increasing not one, two, three, four, five, but increasing by multiples of two. So one, two, four, eight, 16. And so each relative area that you see, if you see a, a growth of one bar to another bar, that's actually a doubling in price, not an increase of just one or uh, increasing linearly. So obviously, you know, I think that most of us understand that on the long term, Bitcoin has been going up in a cyclical manner uh, that has been divided by the Bitcoin block reward halving. Uh, just for anybody who's not too familiar with that, that's when the supply side of Bitcoin gets changed roughly every four years, every 210,000 blocks. Uh, the rate of production of Bitcoin is cut in half. And that has had an impact on the market so far. There's a lot of debate about how much or whether or not that'll have impact going forward. But let's take a look at each cycle, uh, each era. I'm calling this the first era when Bitcoin was produced, introduced, and then up until uh, the first block reward halving is the first era, second era between the next halving, third era between the following halving, and right now the current era until uh, the estimated having which should occur in 2024. So in general, the structure has been with blow off tops each cycle. Uh, the 2013 era had uh, two blow off tops. Uh, the 2017 had one blow off top in December. And this cycle, we have not seen a blow off top yet. And we've also not spent any time above this top line. So let's get into what these lines, this red area with this green line and what this red line means. So uh, if you take an average of the price over 200 days, then you'll get this 
pinkish area here that's uh, delineated by this pinkish area. So the top here is the 200 day moving average. Uh, this green one here is the two year moving average. And you see that it doesn't start until much later because there's not enough data for that to occur. But just for illustration, I've drawn a little doodle here, which kind of illustrates the general trend of what that line would have been like before the average was produced. So this is the two year average and the 200 day moving average. Now the red line up top is actually a five times multiple of the two year moving average. So you can see it's parallel with the two year moving average because it's literally whatever the two year moving average is times five equals this top line. And in the previous two eras, this has indicated the blow off top uh, mania, greed, unsustainable periods of Bitcoin's price action. And the times below the two year moving average have indicated a uh, bottoming of the market. And when Bitcoin is below both the two year moving average and the 200 day moving average, that is a very opportune time to be buying Bitcoin. And right now, recently we have seen a dip below the 200 moving average, but we popped back up and right now we're testing it again. So let's take a look at each of these eras uh, to see if we can see any patterns and what the value of the 200 day moving average is and what we think that could happen moving forward. So that's the overview there. Uh, any questions or any thoughts on it so far? No, I love it. Um, I, I love the simplicity of the chart. It's it's really clear how the halvings influences it. Um, I love the, the bear dips, you know, because that's exactly where the most profits are made by buying in those dips. I can clearly see we are not uh, in that bear bearish mode yet. Um, we should be below the green line uh, following this chart. Um, yeah, the, the question is for me and for many others, I think, is do we think that there needs to be a blow of top or is this bull run different because so much volume is going into the NFT scene and into the DeFi in the scene? So will we have a blow of top or are the yeah. people just diversifying too much to even get a blow of top? So that's the only question I have still. Now. Yeah. And I think that that's a common question on everybody's mind. I posted a tweet about that uh yesterday or the day before, asking uh, my followers, my friends and followers, what they think. Do we think that a blow off top is imminent? Do we think that one is eventual? Or do we think that it will never happen again? Um, and so I'll, I'll share a link to that uh, tweet at the end also, but I would love your viewers feedback on what they think about that too. Um, so yeah, let's jump into it and see what each of these eras look like, um, because maybe they're similar, maybe they're different, right? So Jumping into the first era right here, we have some time when Bitcoin was created, but not actively traded on markets. And so we don't have any price data uh, for much of 2010 and earlier before then. Uh, but generally, the 200 day moving average began just at the beginning of 2011. And by that time, the price had already jumped up quite considerably and was trending upward in a very aggressive manner. And we had this blow off top, this very vertical parabolic on a logarithmic scale move, this very unsustainable move and a very sharp correction. And you can see it bounced right off the 200 day moving average for a dead cat bounce, fell below. And then that signified that we were in a bearish period, even though at this point, nobody really could identify that based off of this trend. This was such a new um, uh, asset. The 200 day moving average is a very commonly used indicator though. And so when the price fell so precipitously below and then came up to the 200 day moving average and found it as resistance, the market saw that as a uh, indication that, nope, we're not ready for the bullish period yet. And so the price again retreated. And it found resistance at this 200 day moving average quite consistently for a large part of the beginning of 2012 before finally breaking out and just riding above it as support. And so it's very interesting that we can see even early in Bitcoin's history, the 200 day moving average is playing a very key role here. As the average began to rise because price was rising above it, um, the, the, the price action led and the moving average followed into the, the halving. And one thing I want to point out is that in this cycle, the price at the time of the halving was lower than the peak price during that cycle. And maybe we'll see that again in the next era. The following era, after the, after the first uh, block reward halving, uh, the price very rapidly took off. And uh, I would suggest that this is so aggressive and so uh, early in the, the Bitcoin era that it was ahead of schedule. It was basically the market got ahead of itself. 
that blow off top uh, needed to correct. And this dead cat bounce actually resulted in another collapse um, bouncing again right off the 200 day moving average. And then shortly after this time period, uh, the two, two year moving average is now coming into effect. And the two year moving average and its 5x multiple can be illustrated because that we have enough data for that. Uh, and so as the price rises up above and we breach above, notice that the, two, the 5x two year multiple is coinciding with the peak price um, of the early blow off in early 2013. And so that breakthrough of both the 5x multiple and the previous highs then led the uh, mania phase, the absolute greed, uh, the unsustainable price action and that blow off uh, correction. And the, the drop off here, it didn't close at the line, but I believe that the dip uh, did come close to the two year moving average. So we see that bounce, uh, dead cat bounce, break down below the 5x two year multiple uh, indicating that we're probably done with this aggressive period. Uh, and that it was confirmed very shortly after when it moved below the 200 day moving average, then found that as resistance and the market responded and the price fell all the way back down to the two year moving average. And the, as the uh, 200 day moving average fell above, it pressed the price down below or two, below as well, and then spent quite a bit of time below the two year moving average Little fake out here, not strong um, correction. So the, the market was not ready for that um, moving above the 200 day moving average just yet. We did see it push up above here, but then find resistance at the two year moving average. And when it broke above, then we can begin uh, getting a bullish momentum in the, uh, in the price action here. And again, note that at the time of the halving, the price is below the previous all-time high of that cycle. So now we enter into the 2017 era. And again, here we see that the price is above the 200-day moving average, rises up, finds resistance at the 5x multiple of the two-year moving average, not once, not twice, but three times before finally breaking through and has that really aggressive vertical move that's unsustainable, the price corrects, bounces off the 5X multiple, dead cat bounce, breaks through it, tests the 200 day moving average once, twice, then breaks through and finds resistance there. And finding resistance at the 200 day moving average indicates that bear period is in effect and the price is suppressed then, finding resistance at the 200 day moving average until it breaks down below the two year moving average. And here at the two year moving average, we saw a very precipitous drop and that was uh, the market cycle bottom there. We did recover out of both the two year and the 200 day moving averages, but because it was early and not, um, there hadn't been enough time, enough consolidation lower than the previous all time highs, we saw a correction and the 200 day moving average does press the price back down. We even see uh, the two year moving average coming into play very close to the halving, which was not too common in the previous cycles. And uh, that, 200, that 2020 COVID crash, of course, many would call a black swan deviation. But in any case, when we break above that 200 day moving average and the two year moving average around the time of the halving, which again is below the price of the previous cycle peak, then the price begins to run uh, and, and return to bullish behavior. And that's where we've been uh, since basically the having uh, in 2020. Before we continue, because this information, I, you didn't hear me speaking because I am deeply interested listening to this. Before we are going to continue, I want you all to give this video already now a lot of thumbs ups, a lot of thumbs up, because this is very, very good information that no, not as shared often on YouTube channels of other influencers. We are doing it. We are sharing the opinion of other TAs because we want you to understand that there is many more people thinking different about charts and about the Bitcoin world. So please give the video a thumbs up and then we will continue. is now that now we are in the next era after the halving and we've been in bullish behavior despite market sentiment, despite uh, a lot of people who have been telling you that uh, the bull market is over and that the sky is falling. 
Uh, and they had, uh, they had some argument here when we fell below the 200 day moving average. Um, but like this bear trap here, uh, we did have the bull trap earlier. So having a bull trap just before the halving and a bear trap just after the halving, to me, makes a lot of sense. It got ahead of the market earlier. It got ahead of the market now. And so seeing these natural corrections to me uh, is we didn't see the bear trap in the previous cycles. But aside from that, um, it, it's very similar to the previous cycles. And the bear trap in this cycle uh, is what we would expect, given that we had a bull trap earlier in the cycle. So in my view, to sum it up here, the 200 day moving average is a very strong indicator of bull market and bear market uh, trends in the cycles. And so that's why a lot of people are concerned about uh, the price flirting with testing, breaking below the 200 day moving average. The caveat there is that even breaking down below there is not necessarily a guarantee that the market is over because last time we broke below the 200 day moving average in this upward trend, we ended up higher. And in fact, the price that we're now concerned about is higher than uh, where it was earlier in the, earlier in the year uh, during that bear trap. Um, so again, kind of review, uh, the 5X multiple of the two-year moving average is uh, kind of the baseline target uh, based off of this analysis for where a blow-off top could occur. And that's above uh, the 140 level now. Uh, the bear market, should we enter into a bear market, the price corrects down below the 200 day. If that happened, uh, then we would find the bottom of the market likely below the 200 day moving average, which is just at about 28,000. And so that's pretty close to, by the time we got down there, probably about 30,000, which is the uh, year open at 2021, the first bounce, the uh, corrective level here. And that's confluent with the golden ratio 1.618 that we had uh, discussed back in June there. So that support level, even if price did fall there, and I'm not calling for that to happen, but if it did, this is probably going to be a very strong level of support. And if we do see support here off the 200 day moving average, then this indicates that the bull run is not over and that we're, we are eventually likely to see price exceeding the uh, five year, 5x multiple. So the question, of course, coming back to the earlier question, are we likely to see a blow off top is this cycle different? Well, because the question now is, what will be the top? How long will it take probably to reach that new top or to reach that new bear bottom? The beautiful part till now I find is that um, even if we would go bearish, it would be to 30K, 28K. Um, everybody that bought in lower than that will never be in loss anymore. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And so uh, the question of, will we see a blow off top? or is the market cycle so different now? Um, yes, it is different, but perhaps not so different. Um, I, 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 as far as I can see, the potential for a blow off top is absolutely still there. The structure is very similar. Um, the timing of it, I think that a lot of us, myself, uh, I am definitely emblematic of this. We got excited earlier this year and we thought that it was going to be occurring earlier. That doesn't mean that it's not happening. And a lot of people, I think, a lot of sentiment in general has been kind of fatalistic. And if you watch the news, God help you if you watch the news, but if you watch the news, there's lots of reasons to be fatalistic. There's lots of um, scary things out there that they'll tell you to worry about. Um, and a lot of things are cyclical. So some things will get better, but some things are just the news and they're going to always tell you bad things. So <laughs> I'm here to show the charts and not focus on narrative and not focus on story so much. I think the charts tell the story. And uh, the, the neat thing about this story is that it's a mystery. Nobody knows exactly where it's going. Nobody knows for sure. Um, but uh, it's, we, we, can, we can make estimated, uh, educated guesses and estimations on what's more likely and what's less likely and what kind of risk and what kind of reward. And if we're looking at a potential risk of, if we're saying coming down from 45, uh, 47 down to 30K, that could be potentially like another 30% drop or so. But the potential of going higher, the top side, we're looking at 140K or higher. So then we're looking at potentially, you know, roughly 3X from here. So 30% risk to the downside, 300% up to the upside. Does that mean I want to sell right now? Personally, no. 
that means that I'm, I'm grabbing in the couch cushions. I'm, I'm selling stuff on Craigslist. I'm trying to accumulate more. I'm not looking to sell because there's a potential that I don't get the opportunity to buy lower. So I think that the common saying that the risk is to the upside is still true. Um, in my view, I think that we're still in a bull market here. Yeah, I think it's uh, always about the risk reward ratio that people need to educate themselves on. I think the risk reward is the, the ratio that they need to look at when they when they do trade. Um, I, I really agree with everything you said till now on the charts. Uh, I think the biggest question at the moment is where will this, if we had that blow of, blow of top, where will it be? I, I did a video today on this, but I'm very curious um, uh, after your opinion on this as well. Yeah, I mean, with the um, structure here, with the the repeated uh, use of the two-year multiple, a uh, two-year average and it's 5X multiple, you know, I, I think that targets above 142 are very reasonable. Uh, a lot of folks think Bitcoin is going to go to 100K and then it's going to collapse. And that may happen first before it goes uh, to 140, 150 or higher. I still think that it's very likely that it goes closer to 200. If we think about the 2017 cycle, a lot of people said that it wasn't going beyond 10, 10K. A lot of people doubted that it was going to go to 10K. And it jumped from 5K to 10K very rapidly and from 10K up to 20K. So similarly here, if we can go from 50K to 100K, uh, that psychological barrier will get broken if price can exceed that. And uh, while I would expect a sell-off around that area, I do think that the price is going to be going higher than that before we see the bottom lines here. And do you do you believe, um, like for example, if we look at the halving cycles, the first halving, it took 12 months from the first halving to the top. 2017, it took 17 months from the halving to the top in 2017. So that's five months longer. Do you see a cycle in that as well that we would take now from the halving 22 months till the top and that then would bring us to March 2022? Or is there another opinion that you have on it's tough. Uh, part of it is language. <laughs> um, I had a, a long thread on this. And, and to be frank, I thought about it afterwards, and I kind of regret how aggressive I was in my rant. Um, but uh, the, the idea of a lengthening cycle is kind of non sequitur to me, because to me, the cycle, the era, is 210,000 blocks. What the price does during that cycle is it follows patterns. It goes up, then it goes down. And it typically goes beyond this point and it typically goes down below this point. Uh, what I know that some other analysts are fixated on is the timing in relevance to the halving and uh, the length of time from the halving to the peak. That may lengthen, but that doesn't mean that the cycle is lengthening. That just means that the length of time from the halving to the peak lengthens. And I, I don't know that we have a proper term for that, but I struggle with it when people insist that that lengthening means that the cycle is lengthening. The cycle is the errors that I have laid out here. Um, until we get to 2024 and see what the price action is doing around that halving, I, I'm, I'm kind of holding off on the lengthening uh, debate. But it's estimated to be, I believe, in about April or May. Last one was in May. Um, it might be earlier. Uh, it depends on the hash rate. And the hash rate uh, has been picking up. But of course, when the hash rate increases, then the block uh, the, the difficulty increases to compensate. So on average, it should still be about probably about April sometimes. And there's, uh, there's a few websites that you can look up um, that estimate uh, when the halving will be, but it will be during 2024. Amazing. Thank you so much. Um, is there anything else? Uh, do you still need to tell us something about the chart or about what you think about the future? Um, uh, I would like to plug my, uh, my group. Uh, there's, there's several people that encouraged me to start up a group and I'm trying to uh, do my best to help lead and inspire uh, the people here. And so I'm spending more time uh, in the community than I am on Twitter and uh, trying to deliver value there. You know, I left my job uh, earlier this year to pursue this, to help people understand this. That's my goal, to bring light and bring information to people. And uh, I'm not an active trader. I'm not a day trader. Uh, I know that a lot of people say, well, if you're so smart, how come you're not making money in the markets? Well, I am making money in the markets, but I'm fully allocated. So if you find my analysis, my information valuable, you want to throw me a tip, if you want to join the group, I would very much appreciate it. I would love to have you a part of it. 
uh, the more people that we have, the more information, the more perspectives, just like your family is growing, my family also. And, uh, you know, together we can, we can all, we're all going to make it. Um, beyond that, that's the bottom line is we're, we're going to make this. Uh, don't give up your Satoshis. Don't give up your Litoshis. Uh, invest in things that are undervalued. Uh, hodl on and have a long-term perspective. And I, I love that that's kind of the, the viewpoint that you, you, you don't only preach that, Didi, you live it. And I appreciate that about you. Thank you so much. I just stopped your screen sharing. Um, for all my followers, I've been following this guy for a long time. I love the charts. You need to understand that all those people on Twitter, all those people that are involved in this industry are doing this pro bono to educate others how to become financially independent, how to analyze charts. It's education. Normally, you pay for your education as well to your government. We are fighting against the government. So we should help each other to educate each other even more. So um, please um, look at his website and, and do as he asked. Um, for me, I'm very thankful that you came to the channel, that you um, educated even my followers now on new things, I believe, because I do think that a lot of people um, need to hear from other people as well. Thank you so much. I, I hope you uh, that I get you uh, back on the channel one time more, like in a month or something, just to see um, how everything worked out at that point of view, if you're if you're okay with this. Um, for the followers at home, if you did enjoy all this information, then please give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and please leave a comment. What do you think about these charts? What do you think about this beautiful analyze that uh, the Year of the Bull just gave? Don't forget to give him a follow on Twitter, even on his Instagram. Don't forget to support him when that is possible. Um, is there any, any last thing that you would tell? Then please grab your minute now, and then we will end uh, the video. It was already longer than normal, but I find it really interesting. I, I just appreciate you so much, man. You've been an inspiration to, to do this independent. You know, I was looking at uh, perhaps getting a job at one of the exchanges or one of the larger crypto companies. And uh, you were an example that I could look to that I can do this on my own. And so I appreciate your, your uh, inspiration. And uh, I, I think that it's so valuable that we're all able to share information together. Um, so I appreciate you and all of your friends and followers as well. Thank you so much for these beautiful words. Um, guys, please give it a thumbs up. Give him a follow. It is our, it is us against them. It is not us against each other. That is what the more and more the crypto community needs to understand. It's not um, throwing mud at each other as crypto community. We collectively should be throwing mud at those that try to rule us in freaky ways at the moment. Uh, so thank you, uh, guys. Give it a thumbs up and see you next time again. Bam.